this out under this abbreviation. Uh, we can move to the next question. So the Python-based API used in the LGSVL simulator belongs to what type? Is library, code, data? Well, in the lecture it says it belongs to the best type of all. For me, neither option is the best. <laughs> Try to guess now. <laughs> <clears throat> is there some confusion around it? So, uh, LG API simulator is available in the source code. So anyone can go to GitHub, download it, and look at the Python code. So it is not the library that we need to link in order to connect to it. Uh, at the lowest level, uh, it is sending uh, JSON files over WebSocket. Theoretically, anyone can take any programming language, say C Sharp, Java, anything, and uh, right connectivity to LG Simulator using that language, uh, just connecting and sending uh, JSON messages uh, back and forward. So anyone can potentially create their own API. So at the very lowest level, it is data. Uh, but we also have the source code written in Python. So it is possible to open it and study everything, how it works. And also it is, it is even possible to take the code and modify it for your needs. For example, if you would like to include into your uh, submission for the contest or uh, into your testing library, some login, or you would like to add some special uh, error or crash handling, you can incorporate directly into the code that is available in the code form. But in a rare case, you do not want to look at anything. You can use uh, LG API uh, just as a library. But well, from my perspective, it is a uh, code. So it is the correct answer is C. Thank you. That's, um, nice answers, like they are called for three of them. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, we can move to the next question, I guess, about fixed protocol. Mm, uh, in the lecture, we had this topic as well. I hope you have an idea what um, kind of area does it come from? Or is it from finance side, from like this one uh, of the format for transferring data of exchange transactions, from IT side, this is a section uh, of the developer's code of honor, or uh, from the sphere of maintenance and support, when something is broken, it needs fixing. <laughs> I think we have the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> From maintenance and support. <laughs> it's changing between two sides, two spheres. <laughs> 
finances and maintenance and so forth. Okay, um, <laughs> we have the echo results for finance and from the sphere of maintenance and support. <laughs> um, well, the answer is from finance side. Um, and Yosef, would you like to make some comment about fixed protocol? No, but I hope it will also be used in Georgia soon. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, okay, then um, we can move to the next one, I guess. What about NPC? Do you know what is it? Um, of course, it was explained at the seminar. Yes, and I even tried to apply it in the simulator. And, oh, but I didn't feel better. Will there be anything except three letter abbreviations in this course? Now let's see who knows what is it. <laughs> and we have the right answer as well. <laughs> yes. I just wonder if um, if you remember it from the last seminar. Very bad that uh, no one remembers it from the uh, previous seminar, because as I remember, Levan has explained it. Um, so it was um, uh, by abbreviation. It's a uh, non-player character. Uh, if, for example, we speak uh, about uh, video games, um, during there you can find the people whom. Um, when you talk, and these people are not uh, controlled or managed by people, they just have a set of the answers that they provide to you. Uh, and for our case, for our simulator case, so these are the other cards that we have in the simulator to have the more real vision. These are the other simulators. Um, as I know, for the next uh, seminar, Alex will um, use it, explain more. So that's about NPC. Thank you. And um, there is one more question um, that uh, comes about IEEE. Uh, have you signed up for this um, IEEE um, challenge? Uh, if you remember, there was a deadline to sign up for 15th of March. So have you managed it? Okay. <laughs> They're trying to collide pedestrians between each other or uh, pedestrians against NPC people. Yeah. Oh, nice answer. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have stats on registration so far. The deadline. Uh, Deadline passed uh, a couple of days ago. I suspect that it is still possible to agree with the organizers. Maybe they will not be so cruel, but 
uh, okay. Uh, currently, there are 234 people uh, registered for the uh, actual uh, autonomous vehicle challenge, and they are split in 134 teams. Uh, most of the teams uh, consist of like uh, three to six people. So there are teams of three to six people, and then there are individual participants. I still think it is a good idea to try go and register, uh, you will not lose anything from uh, from doing it. I'm not sure whether it will work or not. Uh, if, if registration is already closed, but I do not see anyone from, uh, from Georgia in the registration list, at least from, from the quick uh glancing at it. Uh, there are quite a lot of people from uh, from China, from India, from uh United States. Uh yes. But from Germany but not not from Georgia. We need to fix it. <laughs> we need to fix uh, it. <laughs> also, uh, the challenge website now has uh, several uh, updates. Uh, in particular, now there are dates for the official training. So what we have here is more an official tra an official training, an official course, and there will be also uh, official training uh, and dates are now available. So one of them is around uh, March 27, and another is April 10. So the timing for the trading is, well, there are some, uh, what I would say, uh, ungodly hours there. So it is 5 p.m. in San Francisco, 5 p.m. in San Francisco is 4 a.m. <laughs> so <laughs> 4 a.m. in the morning in Benicia. So <laughs> this one is well probably not okay. And another one is nine a.m. in San Francisco. It is better. It is eight p.m. in in Georgia. So it's not that bad. <laughs> so it is nine a.m. on twenty seventh uh, of March. It is. Uh, eight in the evening in Belicia. So it will be the first Zoom session, and the second one is on 10. But if you truly, truly dedicated, you can join the 4 a.m. session as well. <laughs> okay. Uh, also, uh, it just happened that uh, this course, the lectures, uh, they got to official website as a source, but uh, once again, they remain uh, unofficial. So they are, so it is, it is separate from the actual challenge, but we now have the link to the playlist uh, it is on the website. Well, so I still, uh, I still would like to see more 
participate uh, registered. So please do try. I think it's a good idea. Thank you. I also think that you can try. It's worth to try. <laughs> Um, but meanwhile, maybe you have already some questions. I see, for example, Arkady was writing that um, he came across with some errors with the homework. Uh. <laughs> yes, you didn't ask, I <laughs> just say. <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay, so, so then uh, looking, looking forward to our next uh, Q&A. Uh, the next Q&A is about thought uh, protection foundations. It is uh, less related to uh, autonomous vehicles uh, per se, but it is more about uh, generic software testing questions. Uh, we had quite a lot of internal discussion on the subject. And the one after the next one is build software test software. It is about software test automation and generic principles. So thanks a lot for uh, the strongest one who has staying with the course. Uh, we will certainly uh, distribute some uh, t-shirts or something mm. better for the specialists to determine uh, exactly uh, what it will be. But thank you very much. I think then we can close this one. Uh, yes, I will just add one detail um, that I have um, from Alex and Levan that um, there was a request before about using the remote, um, remotely using the resources with our computers. So um, you will get on the mail's instructions, and since tomorrow you can use it. So wait for instructions. <laughs> and uh, yes, thank you for today, for joining today. And okay, I have a question about the lecture. No, there is one more question. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, not prior to the lecture, and also this. Uh, Wireshark is an instrument that is used to capture and view traffic. Uh, you can use it in a wide variety of fields. So you can look at how your browser interacts um, with the web application, or if you are working on some API system, you can look at the actual messages that are going back and forward. So you, uh, uh, hackers can use it trying to capture the packets and trying to understand uh, what is going on. So it helps to analyze uh, what happens at the uh, lowest level. So it allows to capture traffic and view it. Uh, many uh, companies uh, use this approach to obtain independent uh, measurements from the software by capturing traffic separately from the application. For example, if you have some reporting built in the application, uh, it can contain problems. But when you are using uh, when you are using uh, network capture, it is independent from the application, so uh, the problems in application 
will be separate from what you capture. So you have more objective uh, picture. Many exchanges use network capture to calculate latency. For example, the duration between inbound message and outbound message. And uh, anyway, it is uh, quite useful uh, uh, tool, especially for API testing. So I think it is not uh, it is not necessary for sure to know it before the lecture. It is also absolutely not required to do tasks as a part of the course during seminars or using Python API. But I think it is nice thing to see is that uh, if you look at the network level, uh, the uh, Python API communicates uh, with uh, LG simulator by sending simple uh, JSON, uh, uh, JSON structured uh, messages uh, back and forward. So, uh, and it is an interesting thing. So in many cases, to better understand the system, you can look at what's going on at the lowest level, and it can give you additional insights that you can use uh, to improve uh, test, uh, test process and coverage. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, do you have any other questions, maybe? Sorry, what is the question about callbacks? Uh, um, the callback, uh, it is a good idea for software tester um, to understand what the callback is. And uh, for software developers as well, so it's possible that not all software developers encounter it uh, in scope of uh, their work. Uh, and also for uh, when, pe when people study software development in school, in university, quite often what they do is work in a, a single thread uh, uh, mentality when there is when you ask a uh, software to do something it performs something etc etc but in the real world there are quite a lot of things uh, going on so there are interruptions there are callbacks it is uh, when something happens and the software needs to one software thread needs to by another software thread that something is uh, going on. So you can take some steps. For uh, example, when, um, when you write a game and you need to uh, react on uh, pressing mouse buttons or pressing something on keyboard, you will have a section in your code that is uh, say on key uh, on key pressed, and then you can react. If it is uh, up arrow, you need to go one direction. If it is down arrow, you need to go another direction. And uh, example in LG API simulator, the callbacks is uh, when there is a collision, what part of your test code will be when there is uh, a collision 
because uh, otherwise what will need to happen you will need to constantly probe the simulator to see are we there yet are we there yet so have we already collided into anything and it is inconvenient so instead of constantly querying the simulator if we already have a problem you create a part of your code that will be called when something is uh, wrong or when something happens so it is to process particular events. Uh, it is quite a wide, uh, complex and nuanced uh, area of creating event-driven architectures. And I think it is very uh, useful for both software developers and testers understand more on how, how it works. Because uh, once again, uh, these parts of code are called when something goes wrong and uh, parts of code related to the things when something goes wrong are the most error prone. So most software defects will cluster around these areas. So I think it is both uh, useful um, theoretical and practical knowledge but of course the lecture contains insufficient information about it so you need to go and study more thank you thank you yosef um i think um there is no more question for now <laughs> okay um, thank you thank you, thank you all thank you for today so We are in Telegram, so if you have any questions, you know where to write, and we will support you. So, have a good evening, and thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>